if you're here today, you're most likely wondering, not wondering, you're, you're here to see what I do to prepare for sales or certifications. If you're unaware, I have 19 of them. I technically have 21 certifications, but uh, two of them have been uh, retired. So they count, but they don't count because they're not active ones. But I've done this 21 times and I've also taken certifications that I don't have yet. So I'm coming from an area where, yes, I do get a lot of certifications, but I also have a lot of trial and error. So there's been some things that I've found to be successful in doing these types of things to maximize my attempts. So first things first is identifying the cert. So picking the cert you want to get. This may seem like a minuscule task, but it's actually a pretty daunting one because there's, last time I checked, there was 25, but I think there's actually 30 of them now, or there's going to be 30 of them. So there's a lot of different certifications out there. Some of them do require prerequisites, but some of them are, you don't need any prerequisites. You just need to kind of go ahead and do the work. Um, so actually the three that you see on the screen right now, these are all uh, certifications that don't require prerequisites. So there's the admin, uh, app builder and dev one. These are great starting points. These are typically what I would call the, you know, the, the, the launching pad to the rest of the certification uh, ecosystem there. But yeah, basically you need admin to get a lot of the other certifications. And then platform dev one's a prerequisite for like dev two. App builder is just a good one to kind of get your feet wet with a lot of other things. So there's just kind of a lot of different starting paths or a lot of different types of uh, people in, in those arenas but first things first what i do i go review the exam guide because that's going to tell me what's on the test and like i said this, some of the stuff may seem minuscule but you'd be surprised how many people don't know about the things that are on the test just because they never re reviewed the exam guide um because i actually help a lot of people get uh, get prepared for their certification then i go to the exam guide and they're like what is this well this is what the exam guide is it tells you what the audience description is so the audience description is telling you this is who this is geared for. So one of the things to note for the Salesforce admin, I always like to say, point out that you need to know a lot of things about Salesforce and basic administration. But some other things that people miss is like, you should have six or more months of experience as a Salesforce admin. Some of the people who struggle taking the certification don't meet some of these requirements. So they haven't been exposed to a lot of the different things and that would go on within a Salesforce org. So they struggle with some of the questions just because they've never seen that type of content before because they've never actually done it in real life. You can study questions all day long, but if you've never seen it, sometimes when you get that question, you, you can't draw from your past experiences. The, you'd be surprised how much that experience will help you preparing for an exam. Uh, the purpose of the exam is also another one I like to point out, telling you like how they're going to evaluate things. They're going to tell you the recommended training and documentation, all the objectives that you want to do. Um, and they want to basically make sure that you know what's on the test so that when you take it, you can pass it. I always review about the exam too, because there's some really important things in here. Uh, they'll tell you the number of questions that are gonna be on the test. For the most part, all the all the tests are 60 multiple choice questions. Some have that five, nine scored questions in there. They also tell you the amount of time that's gonna be on the test. So you, in this one, you have 105 minutes. The passing score here is also a very important one to make note of. And we'll, I'll get back to that later in the presentation. But this tells you like what, how many questions you need to get right in order to pass the test. The registration fee, uh, it's 200, no, most of them are $200, retakes are 100. Some of the designer ones are 400 and then retake is 200. So you have those as well. And then also just paying attention to some of your other things like your references, uh, no, hard on the, uh, no hard copy on my materials can be referenced to the exam. So this is all coming from your memory. So just know that you won't have those types of things. If you do the on-site, you typically do get scratch paper. So if you are one of those people that likes to write things down, the scratch paper option is there as well for the on-site. And then, like I said, the admin here, there's no prerequisite. So uh, you can go ahead and just take this one if you kind of meet the rest of the requirements of prepping for the certification. I also look at all the recommended training references. So they typically every single uh, exam out there is going to have a trail mix. They have a, you know, some of them have a trail that tells you about the exam. Some of them have a practice test, like the admin has a practice test that, that's out there. So they, they have one that's available for free. There's, all, there's also no one that you can pay for. Uh, doing the super badges is a great way to get some of that quote unquote real life experience. It's not exactly real life because it's, you know, being, uh, there's a goal that you're trying to reach, but you get exposed to a lot of the, a lot of the different things that you'll have to do as an admin. So the uh, security specialist, it helps it greatly with you know, preparing for that security aspect of it that does make up 12% of the test. So there's a lot of information there that you need to know. Uh, learning about reports and dashboards, that also makes up 
it's roughly six or seven desks because it's part of a section there. So there's some good information there as well. So those are only to prepare and help you prepare for the test. Always review the uh, exam outline. So configuration like can set up, that's 20%. Object manager, lightning app builder, it's 20% as well. Uh, sales and marketing, you know, and the different areas here are going to tell you the different percentages of weights behind the different sections. So if you're not really good with configuration setup, you probably want to go explore that. So on that note, I always open up the little tab there to see what are the topics that are going to cover within those things. Just because you read the title doesn't mean that you know everything in there. So, you know, you have to know things about fiscal uh, year settings, business hours, currency management, default settings, set up auto trail, login hours, all these different things you need to know just for this particular section. So on that note, let's talk about how I actually prepare for a certification. And I actually use this guide that they provide you as my guide to prepare for the test. So what I do, what I do is I build a doc. I go ahead and I copy all the different sections. So all these different sections that here they're in here that have all these parts built out. I copy everything out and I paste it in an Excel doc. You can use a Word doc too. It doesn't really matter what you do it, just as long as you're kind of consistent so you know where everything's at. So I will copy a I'll create a document, I'll put all of my different information in there, and then I'll fill in the section with all the research data. So I'm gonna build this document first, then go ahead and do all my studying, and then fill in all the information here so that I have a more or less study guide with all the information that I need to know. So that way, if I do my studying and I don't find information for describing information uh, found in the community settings, I know I have to go research this topic a little bit more to go get that information. How do I do that? I do the prepare for your social minister. Like if I'm doing this one, I'm gonna do the study and prepare, there they have the two trails here and they also have a free practice test for you to do there do those things first complete them that way you know what's on there for the most part all the certifications are going to be taking information that is from one of these trailheads the information that put in the trail mixes even if it points to third-party sites that's all, not 30 person but their external sites if it's not a trail module but if it's like a knowledge article and those things all those things are fair game for the test just so you're aware i what do i do i do the work and this is kind of the document that I was referring to. So I have my section, you know, config and set up. It's, I label it as 20%. I have my first question, which was describe the information from the company settings. And then I have an answer section where I was start putting all the different information that I need to know about that particular section. So I started this great, uh, describing what business hours are and what their tenure use is. And I'll just keep doing that for every single section in the test for every one of those lines that we identified here. So every one of these, I will create as a line entry, and then I'll create all the answers below it. So I have a complete list of the information that I need. One recommendation I would recommend doing before you do that, make two copies, because we're gonna get into the reason why. So you have your copy that has all your answers in it, and then we also have a copy that doesn't have your answers in it. So we're gonna build that document again. We're gonna have all those review sections, but we leave all those blank sections. So all your answers are gonna leave blank. And what we're gonna do is write in your own words, everything you know about that particular top. What that kind of looks like is, I have my question here, and then I'm gonna say, I'm gonna write down everything I know in this section. This is so like a self-study test for myself that I can do to see if I know information. So I can read the description here, like I say, I'm gonna write down everything I know about company settings, and then I'm gonna write everything about, I know about, uh, fiscal year, everything I knew about business hours, everything I knew about currency management, everything I knew about default settings. I'm going to do all those things to prepare for this. And if I miss something, I know I have to go research it. But I'm going to take all my answers I have here and refer back to my document to make sure that I have the correct answers. Just because I wrote something down doesn't mean it's correct. So you're going to cross-reference with your original document you built to kind of make sure you have everything there to make sure that you're prepared for the test. Now, that's not all that I do. There are some other things I do as well. So like I said, I'm gonna check my answers against my main doc. Uh, any of those that I have correct, I'm gonna, I'll mark off the section saying I know that, errors that I'm missing or I have incre uh, incorrect information, I'm gonna go ahead and mark for review to, to restudy up on those things and go find that information so that I know what that area entails. So some of the other things that I do to prepare practice tests, there are some free ones in uh, Salesforce. Pay attention to the trailer modules, especially the ones that look like this the you know, study for the Ministry of Certification exam. A lot of these have some practice exams in them. They're not the actual questions at the end, but they have a little section in there that will present five or six questions on those areas. It's a good area to prepare to see if you, you know have the information you need to know for those sections. So always utilize those questions. Those are free for you to do. Um, like I said, also some certifications have these free practice ones here. So the admin has that free 30 question practice test. And from what I've heard from people, the questions on this test are actually, some of them are actually on 
the exam. I don't know if it's verbatim, but they're close enough that, that I do help you prepare for that. Take the practice test. So, so there are some other tests that you can actually pay to take a practice test. The admin has one. I think um, marketing admin also has a free, uh, not a free practice test, but a practice test that you can take. It's just going to be a good area for you can spend $20, go see what the test looks like, get a feel for it. They give you the results. So they tell you like what you did well and what you didn't. And if you passed, then I would recommend go take the cert, real cert because now you, you know you can probably pass the test. Uh, but it's just a good way to prepare and without spending $200 right out of the gate. If you just want to kind of see what's on the test and prepare for it, that's a quick way to kind of see what's on there. It's not proctored, so you can take it at your own pace. Um, you still have the, the time limit of uh, 105 minutes, but you can utilize, you can see what's, or you can see everything that's on the test. You know, use other tools like Focus and Force. They've been around for a while. They're, they're vetted. They're, I recommend using them just because their, their questions and answers are really well documented and they have a proven success if you do go out there and look for quizlets of questions of the day, be cautious of them i find a lot of them a lot of times the information is either wrong or misleading out of date because no it's two years old salesforce remember has three releases every year so they're going to be they're not always up to date so just be wary of quizlets a lot of times they're going to only prepare you for failure also be very mindful of exam dumps just as a complete side note, exam dumps are a violation of the terms of agreements with Salesforce certifications. If you get caught using with them, if the people that put them out there, they're actually in violation of the agreements with Salesforce for the certification. So I would stay away from exam dumps. If you find one, you can report to Salesforce and they'll work to take it down. Uh, they do take that you know, cheating very seriously. So just be cautious of exam dumps because they can backfire on you. I actually don't recommend them using, using them because of that very reason. So stick to the tools that are there. Some of the other things, resources that I recommend, um, go into your trailblazer study group. So there are plenty of study groups out there that are trying to look for, like there's ad, there's admin cert prep groups that are other people that are trying to prepare for the certification. Go ahead and work with those types of people. Attend your trailblazer user groups. They Those groups are great to not only learn about content, but they're like making people. Some of them are going to be you know, looking for to get those certifications as well. And maybe you could become study buddies, which is our next topic. Find somebody else who's trying to study, uh, get a study buddy, help, you know, help each other divide and conquer. You master one subject, teach the other person. One of the best ways to learn something is to teach somebody something. Look for yourself for blogs. Uh, you can check out YouTube and Google search. If you're doing those last three, just be mindful of the dates. Just because it's out there doesn't mean that it's current. Basically, if it's not within the last year, I would be cautious of it unless if it's something that's you no know, proved and hasn't really changed. So if they're talking about like security setup, for the most part, a lot of those concepts haven't changed. But if they're talking about automation tools, that's been a changing uh, ecosystem environment for the past year and a half to two years now. And everything is basically flow and approval process now. But there is still going to be a lot of information out there about other topics that, yes, it's good to know, but it's not necessarily probably required for your test. All right. So um, test taking tips. So you've done all that pre-work now you're taking the test first things first i figure out how many questions i need to know to answer my no how many answers do i need to know to pass the test so for the admin if the passing score is 65 percent, so 65 and we're i'm gonna count the questions for the you know the, the practice one so 65 questions times 65 percent means i need to get 42.25 so i need 43 correct answers that being said that means I need to go make sure that when I submit the test that I have 43 answers that I I am confident that saying these are the correct answers. If you haven't taken a test, they have an option to mark a question for review. I use that as my counter to count the correct answers. So if I don't know the answer, I mark it for review. So then I can kind of figure out how many I need to, how many I can get wrong more or less what I'm looking to get. Because remember, I already pass, it's 65%. If you get a 70 it's the same as passing as a 60, if you get 100%, it's pain, so you get you get the same certification as somebody that's getting a 65%. So nobody really knows what your passing score is. They just know that you pass because that's just the cutoff. If you're over that point, you get your certification. I do recommend that you first pass, spend a minute to a minute and a half in answering the questions. That's so that you have enough time to review the test. Because I have had people who take the test they don't complete the test because they spent too much time trying to answer questions if you don't know an answer to it a question just pick an answer mark it for review and come back to it you don't want to spend all your time trying to figure out a question 
because at least now you have a potential of getting that question right, um, even if you're not sure and you have the ability to go work in questions that you do have the answers to. Like I said, the first pass through there, it's been a minute to, to minute have answered a question that gives you about 30 to 45 minutes to review, to review the mark for review uh, before your time runs out. That way, you, you know, every single question has at least an answer to it. May not be the correct answer, but at least you have a shot at passing it because you marked it correct. Because if you don't mark an answer, you're not gonna get any credit for it. Um, so I'd rather blindly take a chance on something to get an answer correct versus leaving it blank. And then review of all the questions you marked for review. So we're assuming that all the ones that you didn't mark for review, you are confident in those answers. So what we're looking to see is that you get a total of 43 of those correct in the scenario. Um, the numbers will vary depending on the certification because each certification has a different percentage for passing. Uh, we're just focusing on the admin here. So review the questions, try to get to, to above that threshold. If you are close and you're like, okay, well, I have 43 exactly, you may want to shoot for a little bit higher number to kind of get to the next section. So just work on that. So, but after the test, if you passed, congratulations, but I'd still reveal your results. There may be a section that you still need to work on, review it for your own benefit. You may have done great in five sections, but one section you totally tanked on, go review that section. It's only gonna make you a better certified person in that area because now you have an area that you do need to work on. Go review those, work on those sections so that you are proficient in those areas as well. If you didn't, uh, well, at least you now know what you need to work on. Uh, failing to cert for most people is part of the certification process and not everyone passes the first time, not everyone's gonna pass their second time. Um, I know people who have taken certifications multiple times and are still working on getting them. Failure is part of the process. It's only gonna tell you what you need to know for the next certification. So review the sections using the ways that we talked about again and try it again. Questions for you. What are your certification tips? And do you have any questions for me as well? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, besides the, uh, is there a specific uh, uh, practice test, like a, a brand or something that you recommend? So I like focus on force. Focus on force, okay. Yeah, that's the one that I recommend. Them. I, they have a lot of the certifications out there. That's the one that tends to, for, People tend to do well when they take that, uh, when because they the questions are like minded of that of the uh, of the test. They give you the reason why the answer is. They have folks of ours has two different. They have a prepare you know, prep section where they give you other information. They also have a test section where they give you test questions and then tell you a reason why the answer is the answer. So that's a good way for to learn those types of things. Um, and the content they cover in there is very similar to that which you would see on the test especially for like admin sales service. Um, some of those other ones they have there are really good at covering those particular areas. Do, yeah. you, remember, do you remember how many questions are on that? Uh, like, is it like a 500 questions, a thousand? What, how many questions, sample questions does it come with? I want to say it's like three. It typically gives you four exams, I think around four exams, and they're about the same length as a typical exam. Each one of those, yeah, I um, want to say it's like three hundred or three fifty. They give you the, the, that's the number of questions you get exposed to. Got yeah. it. Thanks. Thank the you. Way, the, the way I use those, Jake, is I'll take that first exam and then um, basically look at the scoring categories and see what what I did, and then I'll go back in and brush up on those um, those areas where you know I'm weak still, or and yeah. then get to the point where I take the second exam. If I'm scoring very high in the second exam, I'll take another, I'll take the third exam. If I took, if I scored high in the second and the third exam, then I'm usually feeling pretty ready to take the exam. Um, otherwise, if I score poorly again in the second exam, I go back and, you know, really pound on the study and again for a while. Yeah, and a little tip that I tell everyone, um, on if you do use focus and force, if you are scoring, 65 percent and pass and score for the test is 65 percent you need to score it on focus and force typically about 10 percent higher than what the passing score is on the, the test um consistently to pass the certification uh it's just something i've noticed that if people go in it they're getting just 65 percent you know across the board when they go to take the test they're getting 50 percent correct so they're not they're not getting to the point where they need to be so focus on force you want to be at least 10 percent higher as your average is than what the passing score is to 
have a good chance of passing the first time. Uh, or and yeah. then so the first time I pass in the test when you take it because the questions are good, but they're not completely uh, representative of what's I want to say. Yeah, they're, they're not as complex. Some of them are, but they're not the complete level of that it's going to be on the test. So just be cautious of that. Don't get yourself overly excited. You need to do better than what they're asking yeah. than what the test is preparing for. Yeah. Another thing when you're taking the focus on force tests, and Jake kind of talked about this a little bit, you have two different ways you can take the test. You can either take it all in line, like a, a real test where you take each question, it goes on to the next question, and then at the end of the test, you look at your score, or you can check an option that lets you see whether you got the question right or wrong after each uh, question. And then it does give you a nice detailed ex explanation of why you got it wrong or why you got it right. and. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, when you're studying for these, it's really important that you understand why you're getting the question right or wrong, as opposed to just trying to memorize the answers, because they're going to be a little bit different on the, the real exam. And uh, if you understand why you get the question right, then you'll do a lot better on the real exam. Yeah, the, the biggest thing for the test is understanding the concept. Memorization mm -hmm. only makes up a small portion of the test. So if you're only memorizing things, it's not going to prepare you for the test. You do need to know how to apply the different things and what they're used for. Um, so yeah, memorization isn't a great thing to do for these tests because you're not gonna memorize everything. Yeah, and Just then one, oh, I was gonna say one last thing too, Fred, as far as your question goes, um, besides focus on force for the admin exam, that official test that Salesforce has, um, is is a really good one i mean it, it's pretty darn close to what the real exam is like the questions might are going to be definitely different you might see one or two questions out of there on the real exam but um it really gives you a good feeling of what taking the real exam is going to be like and whether you're ready for it yeah totally agree with that um, is that is that on is that the one on trailhead where do i find that one so you have to create your web assessor profile for that. And they, you'd go in there to like how you register for the Salesforce, the Salesforce admin exam. In that same section, there's the admin prep. It's $20, I think. And yep. totally recommend doing that. If it's your first time taking a test, you get, it's essentially how they're gonna run that the test. You get a feel for the layout. Um, I I make a lot of my, the people, I run training at Penrod. And a lot of people who are going for after the admin, I make them go through that course just so they get a feel for the test. And it's some of the that's some of the best money you can spend yeah. if you've never been exposed to one of the tests, because then you can see the lay of the land, how it kind of operates. That way, when you go to take it for, for real, you're not trying to figure out how the different tools work. So you can go ahead there and play with the different. You can kind of play with it, and, and also learn from it. So when you answer the questions, you can you know you get you, you get you get your results at the end. So you're going to be prepared for those types of things. So I'll tell you that in you know, setup and configuration, you got a 68%. So you're like, okay, so maybe I need to work on that. So that makes, that's a big section of the test. 68% of 20 points is you know, not the greatest. And maybe I want to you know work on that and get more points. Um, so it's going to tell you your, your, your results. You get a feel for the test. Totally recommend doing that. Um, just looking at some of the, the questions for in, in the chat here. Um, the community practice test questions renew and provide different sets of questions. Is that true? Um, I believe the practice, the page test that we were just talking about, that one does get renewed. There is a test bank and they pull from those test questions every single time. Um, the practice test, there is some overlap with the test of what I've been told. I am not for sure, um, but they're not going to, they're not going to just give you all the, t the questions that are there. They, they have their own, the, the actual admin test and the admin prep test have two different test banks, um, if that's going to answer your question. Uh, they do update them every 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 release. Every single question gets reviewed for on the certification to make sure it matches the current uh, status and also questions that are either passed too highly or don't pass or have a really poor rate get reviewed as well to make sure that they're still in compliance with the test. So um, we do review all those things all the time to make sure that the questions are being asked of you are accurate and um, applicable to 
the current release. And typically that review happens you know, a month or two after the release goes live. They review everything to make sure the test is right. So always pay attention to the number in front of the test. So if it was, it'll say like winter, or if it'll say W, it means that it's in the winter release. If it'll say like W22, what would be winter 22? Uh, W23 would be winter 23. Or the S U would be summer and what the number is. It's going to tell you what release that certification is on. So um, you can prepare. So if you go to take the test and it says that, no, you're doing spring, you know, and you're, you, you've you seen all the new summer content, but you, you know you just need to focus on the spring stuff because that's when the last time it was uh, vetted and verified. Uh, can you explain your question about Trailhead's test? Is it updated or not? What do you mean by that? Which Trailhead test? Within the actual like certification prep, or I'm not sure which question or which test you're referring to. So uh, within that section of those preps, they're probably a little outdated, um, but they they will go ahead and update those questions as see, that you see fit. Um, the questions they're going to ask there, for the most part, their those particular topics aren't changing very much. So those are still good questions to go review because that contents that those sections don't change too much. Um, the only one I you may want to review would be the automation one the, they may still have things that reference either process builder or workflow rules in there, which what I'm being told shouldn't be on the test. Everything is being converted over to, uh, uh, to flows. So know your flows, then know the different types of flows, because those are what they're going to be asking on the test now. Um, do I think focus and force is absolutely necessary? I mean, I don't think, I think the other tools that Salesforce provides you are great. That's just an additional one. If you are struggling to kind of get over that point, if you're looking for a lot of practice test questions, it's a good tool for those types of things. Yeah, um, I think if you take the official practice test first, and then you feel like you really need a lot of work still, those focus on force are really great value. I think, are they $20? Is it It's $20, $19 and you get it for a year. Yeah, it's a it's a really good value if you need it. But uh, I will also say that the it's not like one and done. It's not like you take the test and you can't take it again. You can keep taking those tests over and over and over again for that year. So it's you get to those tests. You can keep retaking the test to up your numbers. Um, so don't be afraid that hey, I spent twenty dollars and I took all four tests. Now what do I do? You can retake the test again and keep using that the information is it necessary it's kind of like what the theory said as well i would point to taking a different test first like the practice test to see where you land and if you're doing well on those maybe go for their real test and if you're not go for there i recommend you you uh, utilizing it just because it is a good resource um and they've been doing it for a while the content is pretty well vetted um, they try. They try. They try to keep up the dates. Every now and then, things you no know, slip through the cracks because you no, know, they're trying to they're trying to figure out what's on the test too. Uh, so they're always going to be that release behind it more or less too as well. Because when things get updated, a lot of the core concepts are going to be the same. So that's the reason why I recommend it because the concepts don't change too much. The wording, the questions, and all that stuff. I mean, they're not going to be verbatim questions back and you know, on each month, that, but they're getting you in the right thinking of how to answer the question. And I think that's yeah. the, the key there is being in the right mindset to ask the question and answer the questions. Because if you've never been exposed to the questions or title types of questions, they can be challenging just because you don't know how to go about kind of answering them. Yeah. Another thing Jake touched on in there. Um, as far as like your readiness for your exam and do you need like supplemental training resources like focus on force um if you have a lot of experience working with salesforce or you have a lot of hands-on um that's pretty valuable and sometimes if you have that experience you take the official practice exam um you'll find out you're you're ready for the real exam and you can go ahead and take it if you don't one of the things jake talked about earlier in the presentation was um super badges and dev orgs. So um, doing some of those super badges really does give you a lot of good hands on as to um, you've seen it, you've actually worked with it. And now when you're reading the question, you you really do have a better idea what you're dealing with. 
Yeah. Uh, dumps, I would not just go with dumps. Like I said, a lot of times they're, first of all, they're, like I said, they're violations. So if you get caught using them, you can lose any certification you, you have, and then you may not be able to go after any future ones. So just be mindful of that. Uh, but when it comes to dumps, I don't think they're worth it. They're just. Yeah, totally they're, agree. They're, they're unreliable. Um, and yeah, they're, they're poorly written a lot of the time and just inaccurate answers too. it doesn't lead you yeah. down the right path a lot of times. Um, I have known somebody who studied it. They, they found this quiz that they swore up and down by it. And then they asked them, well, can I see it? And three questions. I'm like, just so you know, the first three questions that you were, you were studying are all wrong. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, that's not the answer. And I, I proved it to them why it wasn't the answer. And they're like, oh, but they have been using this Quizlet for a month to study for a test. And they just wasted a month of study time on inaccurate information. Mm -hmm. a lot. So stay away from, I would be, like I said, I'm always cautious with Quizlets, any type of exam dumps. If it, if the questions are, if the questions are even remotely to what, it, um, if the questions are even remotely close to what's on the test and Salesforce finds it, that site will most likely be taken down because it's there and they're going to try to figure out who has that site and make sure they don't have any certifications because they will strip them of those things. So Salesforce does take cheating very seriously in that aspect. So I would stay away from those things, um, especially if you're trying to be in there because you don't want to have that black mark on, on your badge there of saying that, you know, you're using these types of resources. Um, if you find them, I recommend reporting them just because it keeps you in the clear because we know Googling something has a high probability of pulling up some of those exam dump types of things. If you find them, report them so that they can be taken down. Oh, uh, the certification days program. That is a great program. I didn't touch on it here just because um, it's not how I always prep because a lot of the certifications that they do prep for, I already have. So I don't always utilize it, but it's a great program. Um, I, I would have to look. Let me get, let me pull up. We're going to go live onto the trailhead here. Just give me one second here to get logged in. Yeah, those are typically a pretty good like half day workshop on whichever exam you're that, yeah. that you're trying to study for. And, and I'll they're also say, Sorry, go ahead. I was, I was I'll also say you typically also get a uh, voucher or at least a discount for a certification. Yep. Yeah. And they're instructor led. Um, you can ask questions. Um, it's a pretty good it's a pretty good um, way to study. Good to take it right before you take your exam too and just kind of as a refresher and see if you kind of missed anything or um usually about four hours i think is what the typical one has been in the past yeah and they do them all over the place here but let's so if you're wondering where it's at i believe it it's in i'll put a uh link in the chat here yeah, so underneath credentials, take free certification prep is where I believe they have that at. Yep, certification days. Thanks for doing that, uh, Larry. So yeah, yeah. We, you can register for free, and they have different ones that are coming up. So if you want to see the administrative review, you can see that uh, next week they have some. So they have the 15th of the you know, 18th, and they have them all in different time zones. So they you can try to pick ones up. And they'll do them in other time zones as well. They don't always do them um, in your time zones, but you can always pick and choose. So they, they have the admin, they have advanced admin, like you said, they have marketing, they have the app builder in here for those who want to do Yeah. I was going to say, you can also sometimes, if you don't see the exact cert you're going for on here, if you go onto YouTube and do a search, you can find some of these get archived and, and posted up to YouTube to where you can watch them and it'll be basically a module on each kind of section of the exam that you can go through and watch typically an hour or so spent on each section. Right.
uh, and then that is also, a great great resource so yeah we also have a trail live which i believe hosts all those videos as well yeah that's a great so, new resource within the last year or so uh you can search in here so we can go off of admin level beginner but yeah these are great resources as well sometimes they have them here they have them in other languages too so if english isn't your first language you may be able to find one that is in your language as well yes yeah, so if you want to learn how collections work in flows you can check that one out or if you i want to say the all the uh, uh social certification days are put in here we just need to need to kind of go through them to find where they're at yeah, preparing for your admin security, uh, certification, security and users. Like this is a good, like these sections are good ones to check out. Preparing for your admin standard and uh, custom objects, reporting. These are all the ones to go ahead and check out as well. Um, if you would like to learn that way. And if you're still in for admin, you can always check out my YouTube channel to check out the admin prep there. All right. Uh, any other questions? Um, I mean, just put question. the uh, trailhead live in the chat here for the link to, straight through to those videos. It's in trailhead if you go there and look around, but uh, that's a link right through to the videos. Thanks, Larry. Sure. Yeah, I have one more question. Um, have you heard of any good, like for, for the basic admin, maybe I, I would not need tutoring, but as I move up the steps, maybe developer is something that I've never done. If I, have you heard of any tutoring companies that you would recommend that are decent? When you say tutoring companies, you think know, like somebody that actually sits down with you? And yeah, one-on-one. On one. I mean, not not. I mean, obviously on the computer, and not face to face, but you know, on Zoom or something. Yeah. The only one that I've ever been exposed to, and this is when I was first starting out, was a company called Stony Point. I'm not sure if they still do it or not, but they would um, do like certification prep. Yeah, okay. there's uh, there is um, somebody out there named Mike Wheeler. Yeah, who produces a lot of content and he does actually live sessions where um, you can sign up for his course. He'll take you through live sessions and uh, you get kind of a study group with it. And one or two of his courses, there's a really neat one um, where you take Salesforce, a dev org, and then you set it up for setting up your job search. And it's, it's a really good um, course that takes you through a lot of different parts of it. but um, he has a, an admin prep course and a, a couple of prep courses for other uh, certs as well. Okay. Mike Wheeler. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll throw a link in the chat for I that would, one too. I would probably use the tutoring for more difficult classes like developer one and two or some, you know, something ad, mm -hmm. ad, admin, ad, advanced admin, something that's, you know, I would probably be looking for a tutor when I get to that level. Yeah. yeah. I think study groups are a really good approach for that. I yeah. See. The, I'm gonna be honest, any of the tutoring types of classes that are out there, they're not really going to be they're not they're not they're not gonna teach you how to actually do it, they're gonna teach you how to pass the test is what their goal is. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Um so they'll be able to tell you how to answer a question right, but in real life, if you have to go create a Apex class and even they're done before you'd be like, uh it's not going to help you, and a lot of them aren't going to help you on that aspect. Um, are the child academy it's worth it? Uh, I'm torn on that because some of them are really good, and some of them are the information is already out there, so you probably yeah. don't. I think if your company is sponsoring you, and they'll, they'll they're going to send you to a class to kind of accelerate the process. Yeah, um, like your child yeah the yeah, trailhead academies like are good yeah i've done a couple of them the i've done a 
more entry level one. And it was one of those things where like I could go all the information that they're covering. It, it's on trailhead. Whereas some of the more advanced ones, like any of the designer ones, I would totally recommend doing those just because the, that information is, it's out there, but they have a way of condensing it. You can ask questions about it. Um, and it, those areas aren't as heavily covered by the rest of the community. But if you're looking for like an admin course, I don't necessarily think it's worth it. Some people swear by it. I have never done an admin one. I've done some of the other ones. I've done more of the, the developer and like architect ones like that. And they're great. They do prepare you for those things. You learn some of the You can ask questions of the instructor. And most of the time, the instructors are knowledgeable in those areas and they can answer your questions. If not, they can get an answer for you and they'll, they'll get it back to you. Uh, it's, if it's, I, I personally would not spend my own money doing it. If somebody else is paying for it, I would, I would do it. If that's where I'm coming from in that aspect. Um, yeah, and yeah, you, uh, Udemy, is, that's another good resource. Uh, just be mindful of the dates on those because so, yeah, uh, they don't always update their content, so make sure that whoever is presenting in there, their content is you no know, more relevant because yeah. I've seen things yeah. in there the first time I looked at it. I've, I've, I mean, I've looked at their resources and I was like, oh, cool, let's do admin you no know, prep. And I looked at it and I was like, from five years ago and they're talking about classic i'm like yeah we're not gonna we're yeah because you have to find the right instructors in there to uh do that and the quality yeah the quality in udemy is really um it varies and like jake is saying uh there's a lot of courses that are older so you want to look for like uh recent reviews you want to look at how many people are purchasing a certain class and never pay full price for Udemy course. They always offer them at huge discounts, like average around 10 or 12 bucks a, a course would be the prices you'd pay on those. But they, there's a couple good ones in there. Yeah. They, they, it's a good place to look if you're going for one of those deeper certifications. Um, they have a lot of more specialized courses that are, are put in there that you might have trouble finding other places. Right. Any other questions? Uh, I'm not as familiar with Talent Stacker, so I can't provide my uh, input on that. Yeah, I've been seeing them more and more, but I'm not really familiar with them either. I did oh. just watch a good video by them, though. That um, so it's something to check out, maybe. Cool. Uh, any other questions, comments? I will post the my channel for YouTube here. Uh, this is where the recording where this will be stored. Uh, like I said, I do have Evan Prep in there too if you would like to check that information out. So um, I also produce what I call cell source tips every week. So you'll be prepared to, if you sign up to get a cell source tip every week and they vary from admin tips to CPQ tips to well, they're on the Salesforce platform, so you won't see very many marketing tips in there. But um, all the different uh, clouds I kind of cover, and I'll be, be building some new training in there as well for a, a new certification pretty soon. So, any other questions, comments, concerns, things you want to bring up before we shut her down for the rest of the well, for the for the day? No, you're welcome. I'm glad to share. Um, like I said, this will be posted again uh, on that site there. So if you want to listen to the recording again, it'll be available. Um, so yeah. yeah, this is awesome. Thank you very much, Jake. Yeah, you're welcome. And I just want to say thanks for coming and hopefully I'll see you next month. <laughs>